uh, Macmillan oh. also. Wow. And, uh, and there, yes, you have a difference between learner's dictionary and, and prescriptive dictionary. So we're talking about print dictionaries, right? But Sure. Do, you can also access them online uh, or you have an electronic version if you, if you like, right? But uh, the prescriptive dictionaries... Uh, uh, I, I, of course, I, I would not recommend uh, for intermediate students. Maybe, I mean, uh, until the intermediate level, uh, it's not so advisable. But when they get around to their advanced levels, uh, I think it's a, it, it would be a good idea to have a, web, uh, a dictionary like uh, Webster uh, Collegiate Dictionary, American Heritage Dictionary. It's another good one. Uh, in, uh, Those are in, both very good ones because they give the origins of words. Yes, uh, something that you uh, wouldn't find in learner's dictionary. That's because, true. Because the purpose of the learner's dictionary is to be more instructive for learners of English. So uh, uh, the orange of the words are not so interested in, uh, in the first phases, right? And I love to teach my students about a word called etymology. Yes. It's such a beautiful word. Yes. Uh, it's the it's study of the origins. Yes. And the best of all is it's the OED, right? There seems to, to be a consensus, uh, even, am even among American scholars, that n n uh, there is no other dictionary better than uh, the Oxford English Dictionary, but of course it's a uh, uh, it's a bridge uh, uh, an abridged version is very comprehensive. Of course, uh, it's very expensive too. You could buy a, a, a CD, or you could uh, if you have a Babylon, right? The translator machine you can you can access OED through through. Babylon. Sure. Uh, and uh, you also have the Webster Third New International Dictionary, which is the uh, unabridged version of uh, Webster Dictionary. And many others, like uh, Random House, Funk and Wagner's. Uh, these are for the Americans one, right? Sure. And well, I, love sh I love showing students how many copies there are. I think there are 26 volumes, something like that. How many in your collection? Uh, are you talking about the OED? The yeah, OED I think you have at least 20. 20, 20 volumes. Oh, uh, look at that. And, and 20 volumes uh, that contain over a, a thousand pages. Uh, Each one is a thousand pages. Yeah, wow. Yes, yes, and uh, that are... Uh, the, the entire dictionary contain, contains 25,000 pages. And it, it has over 600,000 words. Amazing. That's, that's the most impressive, uh, comprehensive dictionary you can think of. Right. It, but this is, uh, it has a different profile because this is a historical dictionary. Right, you have. I think one of the, the the greatest thing about the OED Oxford English Dictionary is the fact that they have uh, what they call quotation that they uh, describe the words uh, from the very beginning that the word actually appeared uh, up to nowadays. Right, you know, and they go over uh, all the period in history that the word. Uh, had been used, and uh, this is fascinating because you learn a lot from that. You know, you you, you actually learn the uh, how the word evolved over the years. Right. And, and so, like in 1890, they could say they had a gay time, or he yeah. is a gay fellow. <laughs> yes, exactly. And uh, now, in perhaps 1978. They would say uh, the gay parade, <laughs> or sometimes yeah. they talk about gay pride parade. Yes, uh -huh. right. exactly. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's interesting. You really learn a lot, not only etymological inf 
in information, but you have everything there, all phrasal verbs, slangs, uh, technical words, technical jargons, I mean, uh, literary words, I mean, uh, ancient words, you have a bit of everything. If you're really dealing with Shakespeare, for instance, we have a very good Shakespeare translator here at our university, and he uses the OED because uh, there are some words that date uh, actually back from uh, the 12th century, and uh, it's impressive because you can actually see how words actually evolved from all those centuries. And, uh, I remember a word called accost, A-C-C-O-S-T. Mm -hmm. And one man says to another man in Shakespeare, you should accost her. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, what does he mean? It just mm -hmm. means to speak to somebody. Okay. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, and if you're reading Old English, you need that, right? Right. So uh, uh, this is a key word, Steve. I mean, when we think about dictionary, we also have to think about our needs. Why do we actually need this or that? dictionary, right? Sometimes you, you're you dealing with uh, translation and you have to translate old English and old literature. Sometimes you're dealing uh, to a specific uh, technical jargon and you would need a specific dictionary to, to meet that purpose. And this may vary from uh, reader to reader, from students to students, right? So to students, learners of English in general, I, I highly recommend learners' dictionary, dictionaries, right? But they uh, should give it a try as far as the, these uh, abridged uh, uh, college dictionary that I also uh, call prescriptive dictionary because they are different than the the learner's dictionary. And we have to remember special dictionaries. My wife has a food dictionary because yes. there are words that we use in English which come from other language, like uh, a filet. Mm -hmm. And um, we say saute. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, That's to understand French. these words very well, it's nice to have yeah. a special dictionary. Sometimes I let my students, I tell my students that I like to read dictionary, that I spend a couple of, uh, even hours, I mean, browsing through my dictionary, and uh, my dictionaries, and I, I always learn something, and it's always interesting, or it's, uh, uh, you know, the meaning of a specific unknown word, or the etymologically information in, in general and sometimes uh, they actually make fun at, at me you read dictionaries but you know it, it, it's uh, you can actually have a lot of fun but and you can learn a lot if you do that right uh, uh, I think one important uh, aspect of a dictionary in my opinion is illustration because I believe sometimes a picture in that saying that a picture paints a thousand words, right? And uh, a dictionary such as the American Heritage actually provides very interesting and colorful. I, I have the the new uh, edition of the American Heritage, and ha it has over four thousand uh, illustrations. And sometimes uh, I'm trying to look for a specific name of a tool, a specific tool. And I just can get the picture by just uh, reading and uh, analyzing its meaning. So I need a picture to show me, you know, what kind of tool is the dictionary uh, making a reference to. So this is also an interesting thing about it. Yeah, my wife even likes picture dictionaries, even though she might not understand every word or use every word, she wonders, what is that tool call, called? Or maybe there's a special kind of animal that she forgot the name. So even English speakers will use picture dictionaries. Well, we've come to the end of another 30 minutes together, and I look forward to our next conversation next week. All right. Uh, thank and, you so much for your attention. I think... Uh, uh, I, I 